When does life begin? Who gets to decide? Does humanity have a responsibility to make that judgment? And do humans have the right to choice or should that decision be made by law? In today's climate, these questions are almost impossible to avoid. But did you realize that this argument has been going on for centuries? This is the history of abortion and this is All Request History. If you're curious about the history of, well, anything, you're in the right place. Subscribe here, leave your requests in the comments, and you could be the next All Request History. The need to regulate fertility has existed for as long as people have been reproducing. In ancient civilizations, abortion was practiced, often using herbal remedies, unusual rituals, and medical and physical methods. The argument on both sides of abortion are as old as pregnancy itself. Philosophers and scholars have debated the ethics of abortion and even argued their views on when life begins. Many agreed that human life should be protected at all costs. On the other side, there were ruthless leaders demanding the acceptance of abortion for reasons like concealing the coincidences of adultery, to maintain feminine beauty, and to prevent excess population. In 4000 BC, philosopher and physician Hippocrates wrote a passage that has been a part of medicine ever since. The fancy words of the Hippocratic Oath basically state a doctor's commitment to heal and prevent health. About the same time, philosophers like Plato and Aristotle considered abortion permissible if performed before the fetus has life and feeling. They both agreed that abortion is acceptable in certain cases and under certain medical circumstances. By the way, do you know how many states in the U.S. currently legalize abortion? Well, the answer is coming up. Another age-old argument has been, of course, religious beliefs. In medieval Europe, the Catholic Church condemned abortion as a sin. But attitudes varied, and among different regions and social classes, things changed. And during the Roman Empire, abortion was legal and widely practiced, but with varying degrees of acceptance. In the 17th century European culture, the Renaissance saw a resurgence of interest in medical knowledge, leading to debates on the beginning of life and the mortality of abortion. The 19th century brought about legal restrictions on abortion in many Western countries, including the US, Canada, and Australia, driven by concerns about public morality and the desire to protect fetal life. In 1864, Judge William Howell wrote an abortion ban in Arizona that is still talked about today. By 1880, all U.S. states had laws to restrict abortion, with exceptions in some states if a medical doctor concluded that abortion was needed to save the life or health of the mother. As the U.S. entered into the Great Depression of 1929, economies found it harder and harder to support families. People started trying to find ways to maintain smaller families. Since there were laws restricting birth control, tough decisions had to be made and many legal, immoral, and dangerous abortions were being performed. In the 50s and 60s in the U.S., arguments to legalize abortion were stronger than ever. In 1964, the Association of the Study of Abortion, or the ASA, and Planned Parenthood were both formed. These organizations were committed to legalizing only medical necessary procedures. In 1969, a Texas resident named Norma McCorvey was denied an abortion because her pregnancy did not pose a medical risk to her life. Texas, like many states in the U.S. at the time, could force a woman to remain pregnant. She fought the Dallas County Court and was defended by District Attorney Henry Wade. The press kept Norma's name out of the news and called her Jane Roe. So this, of course, was the famous case referred to often as Roe v. Wade. The case went on for four long years and went all the way to the Supreme Court. But on January 22, 1973, Jane Roe, or Norma McCorvey, won her case. Seven of the nine Supreme Court justices agreed that the 14th Amendment protects the right to choose. Many pro-life organizations formed in the 60s as well. Catholics were the strongest opponents of abortion. 
The religion's views on abortion is listed in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, Section 2, Article 5, Paragraph 2270. Human life must be respected and protected absolutely from the moment of conception. Between 1967 and 1973, only four U.S. states had repealed abortion bans, Alaska, Hawaii, New York, and Washington. After Roe v. Wade, all 50 U.S. states protected abortion rights, affirming women's rights to choose within certain limitations, although private insurance cannot be used for payment unless deemed medically necessary in most cases. By 1992, there was more access, although restricted and regulated, to abortion procedures due to the Planned Parenthood of Southeastern Pennsylvania versus Casey that reaffirmed the Roe v. Wade decision and made it difficult to challenge stricter state laws. In 2003, U.S. Congress passed a law restricting abortions being conducted on late-term pregnancies. In 2007, Dr. Leroy Carthart went to Supreme Court trying to reverse this law called the Partial Birth Abortion Act. Even though some U.S. doctors considered the procedure medically necessary, the Supreme Court upheld the legislation to ban second trimester abortions. Another Texas case was held in 2016. Whole Woman's Health versus Hellerstelt was another Supreme Court victory after they ruled that two Texas abortion restrictions were unconstitutional because they would shut down most providers in the state and would impose a burden on women seeking safe legal abortion. On June 29, 2020, the Supreme Court struck down another ruling similar to the 2016 decision, June Medical Service versus Russo. Now, the court ruled against a proposed law that would have made abortion completely inaccessible in Louisiana. On September 1st, 2021, again in Texas, a law was implemented called SB8, which bans abortion at six weeks of pregnancy. The American Medical Association denounced this ban, but the Supreme Court allowed it to take effect. And by the way, next week on All Request History, stop by for a much happier history as we find out where the world's first pizza came from. So now as we enter into an election year of 2024, the topic of abortion remains in the minds of many voters. 14 of the 50 U.S. states have a complete ban on abortion. Seven states have conditional bans and 29 states offer legal abortion. So as we navigate the complexities of abortion's history, it would be awesome if we could all just get along, but it does remain clear. It's a story that's far from over, continuing to shape and challenge our societies for generations to come. Well, what state do you live in? Where do you stand? What are your thoughts? Leave your remarks in the comments, and while you're there, let us know what topic you'd like the history of. 